Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, thank God for this week. Thank God for what God is doing on the earth. We bless his name because he is God and there is none else like him. When you see certain things begin to happen, don't join the world to speak ignorantly. Look into the word, search the mind of God and speak in alignment with what God is saying. If you've not heard the voice of God, if you've not heard the word of the Lord, keep quiet, don't speak. But thank God for the Holy Ghost that brings his word to us. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we release our faith and call for that daily bread? Join me right now, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so glad today. See, there is nothing as sweet as having the word of God. Oh, you, it's, 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 there is no amount of money that can be compared to it. I'm telling you, there's no amount of money. Because the beauty of it is it can get you any amount of money <laughs> it's God that you need. So the word of God is just everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we just exalt your name today. We just bless you. You are God. There is none that can be compared to you. You are life. From you comes for life. We live because of you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let your spirit fall on everyone watching right now. Bring healing. Bring deliverance. You are mighty to save, Lord. Therefore, arise and save right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, if you are watching me and you've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, please don't let this broadcast end without doing so. You need to give your heart to Him. You need to give your heart to Him. First, you need to be born again. You need to receive the salvation experience. Then you need to willingly give your heart to Him. You need to make that commitment and say, Jesus is you or nothing else. Please take control of my life. If you will lead me, I will follow you. In every way, not just in some ways. In every way. If you will lead me, if you will just show me what you want me to do, I'll do it. That's the commitment everyone needs to make to Jesus. Because Jesus is the author of life. Salvation comes only through him. He is the only one God has given the authority to give life. If you don't know Jesus, there is no other way. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved. Given among the men, by which men can be saved. There is none. God cannot give to another. He has already given it and he cannot take it back. <laughs> Praise God. So he by himself exalted Jesus to that height. So when we celebrate Jesus, we are not doing it because it's something we feel or we are in competition with. There is no competition with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, I'm sorry to tell you, you can never come in contact with life. Oh, I don't know Jesus, but I have my way of reaching to God. Eh, there is no problem. You know, there's this, there's this um, um, uh, argument, preachers argue. You know, sometimes they castigate other uh, preachers. Uh, sometime back, not, not recently. You know, that they were not bold enough when they were asked that if, is Jesus the only way to God? <laughs> you, you remember that? Now, now, on the surface, as a child of God, you want to say, yes, Jesus is the only way to God. But you see, when you come to the depth of truth, and, and I say this with all caution, 
because um, I'm not saying it's to stir up any problem in your mind. When you come to, when you grow, the more you grow in God, and you you look at that, and then you you revisit that argument, and then you realize that, well, there are people who have touched God without knowing Jesus. You see? But then, here's the point. Touching God is not even what God wants for you. God wants you to have life. He created you to have life. See that now? And God himself have put the authority in Jesus to give life. So what does that tell you? If you don't know Jesus, there is no amount of being pious. There is no amount of good deeds you do that will give you life. You must be directed to Jesus. That's what happened to Cornelius in the the Bible. Cornelius was a good man. See, he gave to God with a clean and perfect that he prayed with, with sincerity in his heart. And what happened? An angel showed up and said, look, you need to meet Jesus. Hey, how do I meet Jesus? Send men to Joppa. They will get one guy there. His name is Peter. He will tell you words by which you will be saved. See, the angel couldn't even bring him salvation. The angel had to direct him. The angel had to direct him to Peter. Now you begin to understand in Revelation chapter 5 why they were, why, why they were worshipping Jesus and saying, He has made us kings and priests. Because you see, we are his gateway now to salvation. I know Mokosa Preda Akataya. You see that? We are his gateway to salvation. If a man wants to be saved, even the angels would direct that man to us. Think about that. It happened with Cornelius. It happened with Paul. You remember Paul? He met the Lord at the, um, at, on, the, on his way to Damascus. And what the Lord says, go to Susan's place. To a man called, go to Susan's place. A man named Ananias, he will come and meet you. And the Lord visited Ananias. Just the same way it happened with Peter and Cornelius. He says, go, go to, there's a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, <laughs> he's go, go, and, go and get him saved. And then I asked one, he said, Brother Paul, the Lord who visited you have told me to come meet you, that you may receive your sight and that you may receive the Holy Ghost. And that's salvation. It's such a great benefit or such a great um, privilege that the Lord have put us, when Paul says he put me in the ministry, you don't know the weight of that statement. You don't know the weight of statements like that, that he can't found me faithful. He found me worthy and he put me in the ministry. He gave me the authority to, to, um, to minister his word. That authority, now there are people who pose as ministers that are not are ministering nothing. That authority is not just about carrying Bible and preaching. There is, there is, there is something that, that he deposits in you that gives you the authority to minister. If that thing is not in you, I'm sorry, no matter how much gymnastics you do on the platform, you're on your own. So you see, these days we live in, number one, you must become conscious and aware of your salvation. So I said, you must give your heart to Jesus Christ, willingly surrender it to him and begin to walk according to his leading. You must be certain about that. Praise God. So yesterday, 
I was sharing with you the prophecy of Joel. And I showed you yesterday that what happened on the day of Pentecost is actually the beginning of the prophecy of Joel. Now let's go back to Joel chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I'm going to start reading from verse, I told you verse 28 is a continuation. Verse 28 is not the beginning of the prophecy. Now, let me look for a good place to start. Um, verse, lots of things he said. Let me, let me start from verse 1. Now, he was speaking in prophecy from, I mean, you can read the whole from chapter 1. You can start reading. But then, now, this is a good place. I say, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has given, has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the trees bear its fruits. Now, watch this. The fig trees and the vine trees yield their strength. Now, look at verse 23. Take note from here. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Who is he talking to? Those that have received the Holy Spirit in them. It says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you, take note, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Old King James says, moderately. Okay? And he will cause, take note, and he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month the threshing floor shall be filled with now take note it says when this happens take note follow the sequence of things when this happens the threshing floor shall be full of wheat what's that food see food and the vast shall overflow with new wine and oil he is talking about prosperity Watch this now. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming, swarming locusts have eaten. Restoration. The crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I send among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Now you see, I am Kombri Ita Skubra Ita. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Mm. So he releases the former rain moderately. And he releases the latter rain. And then he says, things will begin to happen that is going to generate prosperity in your life until the point that you will eat and be satisfied. Now, when he says you will eat and be satisfied, he says you'll be well taken care of. That's what he's saying. I've told you this on, on Friday last week. I said, when God says, I will bless you, simple, simply put, I will take care of you is what he meant. When God says, I will bless you, he's just saying, I will take care of you. It's not something he lays hands on you. Oh, I've, I've, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. No. No. The result of the blessing in your life is the ability for you to begin to easily receive things from God. A blessed man is a man who knows how to receive from God. Take note of that. I'll repeat that again. A blessed man is a man who knows how to receive from God. A blessed man is not just the one who has billions in his account. No. A blessed man is not the, just the one who, um, who has estates and all that. No. A blessed man could have an estate. But the owning of an estate doesn't mean a man is blessed. A man can steal and build estates. A man can steal and have billions stored in his account. So the having of those things doesn't make you blessed. The, the way you know that you are blessed is that you receive those things from the Lord. I'm not saying giving God attribute. You know, you know these days, you know, it's God though, it's God. What can I say? It's God. 
Meanwhile, they know what they did to assess that blessing. You see that? But they, oh, we give God all the glory is God. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who truly speaking can give you the details of their work. Can give you the details and it will show how God takes care of them. Those are the blessed people. Take note of that. So when he says, he says, and my people will not, shall never be ashamed or never be put to shame. So you see, God releases the spirit and the spirit begins to walk in them, generating this prosperity in them. Now you understand why John said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he says, I wish you prosper. What was he referring to? I wish you increase in how much God takes care of you. Now when you see this, you begin to observe closely what are the things God has put in place. What are the scriptures that have been outlined for us to use as pointers to these things. Now, all these things will happen until we get to that point where in nothing, that in, we'll look at ourselves and say, man, we are never ashamed in anything. Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because now, you remember what he said in Hebrews 13, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that you will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any man can do unto me. That's what Joel was referring to. That statement in Hebrews 13 is also referring to the prophecy of Joel, that you will not be ashamed, that you will not be afraid. So God is working out this thing for you, that you will never, in nothing, in nothing, you will be put to shame. Oh, not when it's time to pay your children's school fees. Hey, 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 how do we tell the school? No, no, no. He says you should not be ashamed. No, I'm not saying I won't be ashamed. I'll go and tell them I don't have money. Uh -uh. When it's time to pay, you have what it takes to pay. That's what he's referring to. You will not beg nobody. You will borrow from nobody. You will be on time for every payment. You see that now? Now, this is what Joel prophesied. And this is what began on the day of Pentecost and is still working till this day. But because, now why has it dragged so long? Lack of understanding. You see, something began to happen in the early church. The brethren walked in so much prosperity to the point that the Bible said no one lacked anything. Mm -hmm. But then you now ask yourself, what happened afterwards? When persecution broke out, what happened to them? As they spread all around the world, what happened to them? Who came to preach another gospel to us? A gospel without prosperity. A gospel that condemns prosperity. Prosperity is not just having big cars and, and no, no, no. God having access to in God to take care of you as an individual. You remember Paul says, for God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That's exactly what he's talking about. So God wants you as, a, as an individual to be self-sufficient. Possessing enough to require no aid or support. That's how the Amplified Version puts it. That's God's plan for you. Now this must be accomplished in you first. Before the Holy Spirit is poured out. So he's looking at us manifesting the Spirit of God in its fullness from the place of blessing. Not from the place of lack. Not from the place of want. But from the place of blessing. Real, genuine blessing. Not blessing that you've exploited people to get. Real, genuine blessing. So we must follow that pattern to get to the destination that God is leading us to. And remember, he says, I'm opening the book. So that's exactly where we are right now. And this is what the Spirit of God wants to straighten out in our lives. And this is the reason I'm sharing these things with you. Praise God. Now, before we close, my time is up. Listen, on Friday this week, just a few days from now, we're having a program 
at the Three J's Hotel in Otako, Abuja. Now, if you have a problem locating the place, call the number on the screen so we can give you direction. By 5 p.m. this week, Friday. Save the dates. Plan for this. I would love to see you. I'm inviting you specially. I would love to see you. It's going to be a wonderful time. And you will leave that meeting knowing one thing that you have received from the Lord. Praise God. Plan for it. I'll be expecting you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.